sir. Come, have a seat. Now, because I will have no two things alike in this, my play, the last act beginning with a witty scene of birth, I begin this act with a funeral. And is that all your reason for it, Mr. Bales? Oh, I know, sir. A very wise man once set his funeral in just so. Come, come, bring in the funeral. Our grief receive from its embraces some relief. Was it not unjust to ravish hence her breast, breath? <laughs> and in life's stead to leave us naught but death. The world discovers now its emptiness, and by her loss demonstrates. Thyself within my breast, 
which only Lordella's womb, tomb, can rest. <laughs> oh, dagger, come, penetrate this heart, which cannot from Lordella's love depart. Hold! Stop your murdering hands at Pallas's commands. For the supposed dead, O king, forbear to act such deadly things. Lordella lives! I did but try if princes for their loves could die. Such celestial constancy shall by the gods reward it thee. And from these funeral obsequies, a nuptial banquet shall arise. Ah, yes! Now the funeral's out! Now, you must perceive that this now is the funeral of the very same person that Bolsius sent word was dead. And now, palace has ended and turned it into a banquet. Well, then where is this banquet? <laughs> Why, sir? First, they must have a dance out of joy that she is not dead. Let me leave to bring in my things properly, at least. Uh, that indeed I had forgot. Uh, I ask your pardon. Do you? Why, sir, I am pleased to hear yourself admit yourself at once in error, Mr. Smith. <laughs> Now, gentlemen, I will show you a 
scene, or rather indeed it is the scene of scenes. Tis a heroic scene with gilded treasures, false conceit, and a rant. Come, come in.
Maybe that God subscribe himself a devil. That single line he can is better than all my other brother poets ever writ. Come, let down the curtain. <laughs> <laughs>